In the flickering moonlight filtering through the narrow bars of her dungeon window, Ayana, shackled in chains, soaked up every ray of light, as if seeking solace or answers. At that moment, the silence of her solitude was broken by Erez Roselle, his footsteps echoing down the corridor as inevitably as his arrival. He, standing at the threshold of her cell, noticed that Ayana was refusing food, as if trying to hasten her departure from this world. His words, though spoken with care, made Ayana's soul storm with resentment. Watching her, Erez couldn't help but notice how her eyes dimmed as she gazed at the moon, a symbol of freedom and unattainable distance, so far from her grim reality. His words, the suggestion of her desire to end it all, seemed like an attempt to awaken her will to live, but instead only fueled the fire of her inner protest. This moment was another test for Ayana, a confirmation that every word, every glance in this confinement, was a test that required her to keep her fortitude and patience. Behind every visit by Erez Roselle to her gloomy cell, Ayana saw only two reasons. Either he had come to mock her powerlessness, or he was waiting for the moment when she would finally break down and beg for mercy. But even after thirteen long years of her captivity, she would not let herself forget the thirst for revenge that burned in her heart with inexorable force. This revenge was directed against one man, Erez Roselle, the man who had caused the death of her family, her clan, destroying everything that was dear to her. Erez, for his part, responded angrily to her silent accusation, he emphasized that in the past thirteen years, she could have built a new life, made a clean slate, found the strength to forgive and let go of the past. But there was not only anger in his voice, but also a kind of disappointment, as if he had expected more from her than an ongoing battle with the ghosts of the past. Erez warned her that if she did not change her ways, an inevitable and tragic end awaited her. The plague, a symbol of extreme punishment and a point of no return in their confrontation. When Erez made his final offer, promising Ayana mercy in exchange for her unconditional submission, the atmosphere in their meeting reached a boiling point. Erez's words, sounding like a generous offer to some, to Ayana they were a test of her steadfastness and loyalty to her beliefs. Suddenly, her body trembled, not from fear, but from an inner resistance and rejection of the very idea of submitting to the one who had caused her endless suffering. But after a moment, the situation took an unexpected turn. Ayana, instead of the predictable despair or brokenness, suddenly burst into laughter. That laugh was neither joyful nor lighthearted. It was a laugh of defiance, of contempt for the fate Erez was trying to impose on her. Laughing, she declared that she had no fear of Erez. In fact, her words sounded like thunder. She was only sorry she hadn't finished Erez off when she had the chance. These words were a vivid testament to her indomitable will and willingness to face any threat or challenge, even in the face of her own demise. As silence began to envelop the space, Erez, deep in thought, performed an action full of meaning and despair. He sighed heavily. That sigh, as if carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders, was the harbinger of his next decision. He turned around slowly and stepped away from the center of attention, leaving the camera behind him, disappearing into the uncertainty that awaited him ahead. In that momentary pause, filled with the inevitable sense of betrayed silence, Ayana, whose anxiety and worry had overwhelmed her with unexpected force, broke the lull with her question. Her voice, shrill and demanding answers, cut through the air. She was asking about Diabel, her bodyguard, whose absence was suddenly felt all too keenly. Erez, as if paying tribute to the importance of the moment, stopped his journey into seclusion and turned to Ayana. His reply was brief, but it was deep in its understanding of the situation. He emphasized that Ayana was in a position where worrying about the fate of others was a luxury she could not afford. This moment became the dividing line between the past and the future, where each character faced the crossroads of their destinies, realizing that the road ahead required new decisions, new sacrifices, and possibly new losses. The next moment, while Erez's words were still echoing in the air, Ayana was seized by an elusive shiver. It was something on the edge of physical sensation and emotional outburst, a fleeting ghost of past calamities suddenly coming alive in her soul. Almost immediately, however, she found the strength to tame this wave of uncertainty, finding calm in the flow of her thoughts, which inevitably tended toward one thing and one thing only, 
Diabel. In this moment of inner calm, Ayana allowed herself to be distracted from the storms around her, immersing herself in thoughts of her loyal protector and companion. From the moment tragedy struck Rihaf's home, crippling her past and defining her future, Ayana found her purpose in a feeling far more powerful than any pain. Revenge. This anger, deeply rooted in her heart, became not just an emotion but the foundation of her existence, the engine that pushed her through every ordeal. Erez, whose name was now inextricably linked to her mission, became the symbol and target of that anger. But she wasn't the only one keeping Ayana afloat in this sea of despair and hatred. Diabel, her faithful bodyguard, had been her support over the years, a shield behind which she could find refuge from all storms. He was not just a protector, but a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there can be a light nearby to dispel the darkness. This bond with Diabel, strengthened by years of fighting together and mutual devotion, became for Ayana not only a source of strength, but also a ray of hope that allowed her to look forward to the future despite all the difficulties. In these moments of reflection on Diabel, Ayana realized that her path, the path of vengeance, would not have been possible without this faithful companion whose shadow always accompanied her, protecting her from any threat. On that fateful night when Ayana's fate hung in the balance, Diabel became her salvation when it seemed like the end was in sight. With an unyielding determination and bravery that could only be inspired by boundless devotion, he helped Ayana break through the ring of impending threat, opening her path to freedom. That night, illuminated by the lights of Rehoff's burning house and drenched in blood, was the turning point in their fates, forever imprinted in Ayana's memory as the beginning of her new life. Even when circumstances turned against her and the new family she'd found refuge with betrayed her, putting her at the mercy of Erez, Diabel didn't give up the fight. His loyalty and courage knew no bounds. He fought with hordes of soldiers, proving with every swing of his sword that his spirit was unshakable and his faith in Ayana's protection stronger than any fear. Death seemed inevitable. Every moment of their pursuit could be their last, but Diabel wasn't about to back down. His bravery and self-sacrifice were a light in the darkness, the last hope of salvation when there was no hope at all. At that critical moment when all seemed lost, Ayana made the decision on which Diabel's life depended. Her heart, filled with the pain of betrayal and loss, could not allow the one who had been her protection and support to die because of her. After surrendering to Erez, Ayana chose self-sacrifice to save the life of a loyal friend who had sacrificed so much for her. This act was the highest expression of her feelings for Diabel, proof that in the depths of her tortured soul lived not only the thirst for revenge, but also the capacity for boundless gratitude and love. In that fateful moment, as the shadows thickened around Ayana's fate, her helplessness became palpable, like a heavy cloak falling around her shoulders. She was restrained quickly and with no possibility of resistance, and Diabel, her staunch defender. He could only scream helplessly as he watched Ain being led away to the dungeon, his cries of despair tearing the air but powerless to change the course of events. Meanwhile, deep in her cell, Ayana was burning with the desire to see her protector again, or at least hear from him, to know that he was alive and safe. Her heart was filled with anxiety and hope that despite all the horrors they had endured, Diabel would still be able to return to her to be her support and protection once again. Instead of news of her protector's fate, however, the world's only answer to her prayers was the heavy, ominous footsteps echoing in the dungeon corridor. Each one seemed like a looming messenger of impending execution, a reminder that Ayana was running out of time. Those footsteps, grim and inexorable like fate itself, came closer and closer, leaving less and less hope of rescue. Ayana, the epitome of steadfastness and calm, mustered all the will and determination to face her sentence with dignity. She was in a state of suspense where every minute stretched like an eternity, and in this sea of uncertainty, Every sound, every rustle in the hallway made her heart sink. But when all seemed hopeless, something happened that fundamentally changed the course of events. Suddenly, in the gloomy atmosphere of the dungeon, like a ray of light through the clouds, he, Diabel, appeared. His appearance was like a mirage, unbelievable and saving. Ayana, unable to believe her happiness, 
clung joyfully to the bars of her cell, her eyes glistening with tears of joy. Diabelle stood before her, declaring with unfailing nobility and determination that, being a knight, he could not stay away and was obliged to come to her in spite of all risks and dangers. Those words sounded like music to Ayana, filling her heart with warmth and hope, spreading warmth across her chest. However, in that moment of reunion and joy, Ayana noticed something that made her flinch and look at Diabelle differently. There wasn't a scratch on his countenance, not the slightest trace of struggle or suffering, which was odd considering the circumstances of their separation and all that he may have gone through to be here. This discovery brought a wave of questions and doubts to her heart. How could Diabelle look so unscathed after all the hardships she assumed he had to overcome? The moment Ayana, overwhelmed with hope and despair, told Diabelle to unlock the door of her dungeon cell, expecting him to do something worthy of a knight, Diabelle answered her with an unexpected smile. That smile did not herald liberation, as it might have seemed at first glance. On the contrary, it was the herald of something much more complex and ambiguous. Diabelle had not come here for salvation in the usual sense of the word. His purpose was to make a deal, an offer that was fundamentally different from Ayana's expected gesture of nobility and chivalry. Their gazes met, and in that silent exchange of glances flashed as much emotion and unsolved mysteries as would ordinarily be packed into a lifetime. In the silence of her cell, lit only by the faint light that barely filtered through the narrow windows, Ayana met Diabelle's gaze, full of mystery and innuendo. Then Diabelle, as if playing a mental game with her, reminded her of a play they had once watched together. It was the story of two lovers whose fates unfolded in the grim setting of an enemy dungeon. The protagonist of this play died believing his beloved was dead, which was a profound and powerful reminder of how easily one can lose everything most dearly through the deception of appearances and misunderstandings. This reminder was more than just a memory of a cultural pastime for Ayana. It took on a new, deeper meaning in the context of their current situation. As the silence between Diabelle and Ina was filled only with the sounds of the world around them, Diabelle began to ponder aloud how the fate of the characters in their play might have turned out if they had acted differently. His words were filled with curiosity and speculation about possible paths that could have led to a very different outcome of the story, particularly the question of the protagonist's revenge. These reflections were not just idle fantasies. They dealt with profound questions of choices and the consequences those choices can carry. Ina, listening to him, could not understand his reasoning. Diabelle's words seemed distant and incomprehensible to her, and she could not catch the thread of thought that would help her to understand his intentions. All this time she had only seen him as a friend and ally, but now his words made her look at him from a different angle. Then, when Diabelle mentioned Ayana's alternate history— an interest he clearly wasn't hiding, Aina felt a slight twinge of fear. That moment was the breaking point in their relationship. The Diabelle she had known up to that point seemed like a completely different person. His curiosity about alternate scenarios for the characters' lives, including her own possible fate, startled Aina. She hadn't expected that ruminations on possibilities and unfulfilled events could interest Diabelle enough to begin to see them as something worth special attention. In an unexpected moment, when the conversation seemed to have reached its climax in an exchange of thoughts about possibilities and alternate histories, Diabelle offered Ina a possibility that might have seemed too fantastic to be real. He offered her a fresh start. This proposal was not a simple philosophical argument about the possibility of making changes to actions or decisions that had already been made. No. Diabelle was offering something far more concrete and magical, the ability to go back in time. He explained that there was a way in which Aina could, by contracting with him, plunge into the depths of time and relive her life again, but in a different scenario. This proposal sounded like an invitation to a journey, in which she would be able not only to correct the mistakes of the past, but also to rethink every step perhaps even to change the very essence of her existence and destiny. Ayana, feeling a wave of distrust and doubt, turned to Diabelle with a question as piercing and sharp as a sword blade in the hands of a seasoned warrior. She wondered if he had not changed his principles and gone over to Erez's side, offering her now, under the mask of good intentions, nothing but deceit. 
Diabel's answer was both enigmatic and provocative. He smiled, his smile full of ambiguity and understatement, as if he were playing an intellectual game with Ayana, in which every move he made was designed to elicit a certain reaction. Not quite crossed, he stated, the words resounding in the air, leaving behind a trail of misunderstanding and doubt. Those words, light as the wind and as mysterious as a night without a moon, caused Ayana's anger to surge. Her heart boiled with emotion, like a volcano ready to erupt. Unable to contain the storm of emotions that flooded her, Ayana, agitated and angry, shouted, ordering the dungeon door to be opened. Her voice, shrill and powerful, reflected the strength and determination of her character. In the heart of the night, when silence enveloped the world, and only the first rays of dawn were beginning to break through the veil of darkness, Diabel, whose presence always meant a change of fortunes, made an unexpected announcement. It was like a messenger of destiny, reminding us that time was inexorably passing and the dawn had already come, leaving behind the night shadows and all doubts. With each moment that passed imperceptibly, the grim fate of Ayana approached, a girl standing on the threshold of eternity whose fate was about to be decided without the possibility of intervention. Diabel, whose words reeked with the coldness of inevitability, turned to Ayana with a question that pierced the very core of her being. He asked if she would accept the bitter fate that fate had in store for her, or if she would dare to defy time itself by entering into a contract with him, Diabel. This contract could be the key to the gates of the past, giving Ayana the chance to change the course of history, intervene in the arrangement of destinies, and rewrite the final pages of her life's chapter. At that moment, as dawn dispersed the darkness and brought the inevitable closer, Ayana was faced with a choice that would determine her fate. Will she accept the role of a pawn on the board of fate, resigning herself to the cruel reality of execution? Or will she find the strength to resist the established order of things, choosing the path of rebellion against the predestined? At the moment when the decision was about to be made, Ayana, as if feeling the last ray of hope in her heart, grasped Diabel's hand decisively. Her voice sounded confident and firm as she announced her agreement to the contract. There was an unwavering determination in her words. Despite the risks and possible betrayal by Diabel, she saw this as her last chance. A chance for revenge. A chance to right the wrongs of the past and destroy the Roselle family that had caused her suffering. Ayana was ready to sacrifice everything she had for a chance to change her fate and fulfill her revenge. Diabel, whose figure was always shrouded in an aura of mysticism and unpredictability, took her decision with unexpected warmth. His smile, glimpsed in the half-darkness of dawn, added a special flavor to the scene. He knelt gracefully before Ayana, like a knight before his queen, and kissed her hand reverently. This gesture, filled with both respect and promise, symbolized the beginning of their agreement. It was a sign not only of their contract, but a recognition that there was a bond between them stronger than any words. As soon as the agreement was made, Ayana was seized by a sudden sharp pain, as if the very essence of her being had been put to the test. The world around him began to distort, creating the illusion of cracks in the very fabric of reality, which gradually consumed the surrounding space. At this point, time seemed to slow its run, and each second stretched to infinity. Diabel, with his unchanging smile, stood at the epicenter of this chaos, unperturbed and mysterious. His last words, filled with sincere wishes for Ayana's success, sounded like a blessing, or perhaps a warning. He wished her to achieve the outcome she sought, but there was a sense of ambivalence in his voice, as if the outcome of her mission could be ambiguous. The next moment, as the world around them was finally consumed by the cracks caused by the magic contract, Ayana suddenly found herself in her bed. Her heart was pounding frantically in her chest, and her breathing was sharp and ragged, as if she had run many miles without stopping. In the silence of her room, so familiar and yet so different, she tried to call Diabel, but he was no longer there. She was alone among soft pillows and warm blankets, trying to figure out if it was all real or just a dream too vivid and alive to be true. The moment the cool wind gently touched her skin, Ayana was overcome with an overwhelming shiver, doubts and conjectures swirling inside her. 
she deepened her thoughts on whether Diabelle could have been complicit in the conspiracy Erez was leading. Worry and anxiety about the future began to consume her mind, but deep down she still hoped that her suspicions would be in vain. For Diabelle was more than an acquaintance. He had been her support, her world for all those thirteen years. She felt safe in his presence, and even now, standing at a crossroads, her heart fluttered with the desire to be by his side no matter what the future brought. But suddenly, this silence was cut by the voice of Sophie, the maid, who had suddenly appeared to announce the imminent arrival of the guests. Those words seemed to break the shroud of Ayana's thoughts, and in that moment it was as if she had awakened from a long sleep. Her heart hammered in unison with the realization that what was happening around her was not just a play of imagination, but her return to the past, to the very moments that once seemed irretrievably lost. With this realization, a new hope was born in Ayana's soul, and at the same time, anxiety for the trials yet to come in this familiar yet unpredictable world of the past. Sophie, whose smile was always filled with warmth and care, brought another piece of news that made Ayana's heart freeze for a moment. She informed her that Ayana's father, a long-awaited and deeply respected man, was due home today. These words sounded like thunder to Ayana, for she had not yet recovered from the shock of her sudden and incomprehensible return to the past. Her mind was gripped with a mixture of excitement and happiness at the thought of seeing her father, whom she had not seen for so long. Without giving Ayana time to think, Sophie took her by the hand and, like an older sister, led her to the washing routine to prepare her for the big event of her father's return. As she approached the basin of water prepared for washing, Ayana was confronted with something that made her heart stop in surprise. The reflection in the water showed her that she was thirteen years younger. It was as startling to her as the fact that she had traveled back in time. Walking through the expanse of her home estate, Ayana felt every corner of it, every rustle of leaves in the wind, as if trying to convince herself of the reality of what was happening. Everything around her was so familiar and yet so unbelievable that her mind refused to accept it as reality. Everything seemed the same as it had before the tragic events that had led to the death of her kind. She could not shake off the feeling, as if she were still immersed in a deep and vivid dream from which she must soon awake. But suddenly, like a stroke of lightning dispersing the mists of doubt, the two figures that so vividly reminded her of the past came into her field of vision. They were her brothers, Lloyd and Blair, who always wore glasses that gave him a particularly scholarly look. Seeing them, Ayana felt the reality around her become even more tangible. Lloyd and Blair, her brothers, who were not only related to her by blood but also close friends, now stood before her in flesh and blood, not in her memories or dreams. This moment was the point of no return for Ayana to her previous aversion to her situation. Her heart was filled with a storm of emotions, from unbridled joy to profound surprise. In one unique moment, when time seemed to stand still, Lloyd, whose presence had been but a shadow in Ayana's memory for years, suddenly turned in her direction. With the casualness and warmth that could only be expected from a long-lost but never forgotten brother, he beckoned her to him. The gesture seemed to awaken a whirlwind of feelings in Ayana. She was confused and hesitant, for before her stood the man she had thought lost forever, the one she had not seen for thirteen years. Meanwhile, noticing her sister's hesitation, her younger sister, the epitome of care and concern, ran up to Ayana unhesitatingly. Her actions were full of genuine concern for Ayana's well-being, as if she wanted to make sure that Ayana was all right that the unknown power to bring their brother back had not harmed her. And so, barely calmed from the initial shock, Ayana felt her brothers running up to them as well, each carrying with them a piece of the shared joy and hope of reunion. That moment was the culmination of the feelings overwhelming her, and she couldn't hold back the tears. For Ayana, at this moment in time, it no longer mattered if it was reality, a dream, or an illusion. It didn't matter if the moment was a return to the past or just a fleeting deviation from everyday life. The only thing she longed for was to be with her family, to absorb every detail of that meeting, every look and every touch. She longed to feel the warmth of the family circle, even if it was only for a moment. In that moment, time stopped for Ayana, and her whole being was filled with love and hope, 
for despite all the obstacles, she was once again together with those dearest to her. As soon as the silence of the manor was broken, something magical happened. The servants, as if on an invisible signal, lined up in a neat and orderly row, heralding an important event. At the same time, from beyond this world of solitude and peace, the sure, rhythmic sound of an approaching carriage came from the street toward the house. This sound, filled with expectation and anticipation, was the announcement of a soon solemn moment. The doors of the house, as if obeying an invisible command, swung open, and the air was filled with an air of importance. As if to crown it all, the announcement was made. The master has arrived. These words, spoken with such solemnity and confidence, announced an important event that would bring about a new change. And so, confirming all expectations, Ayana's father stepped out of the carriage that had stopped at the entrance of the house. This moment was the highlight of the day, filling the hearts of all present with joy and awe. For Ayana, it was more than just the return of her father. It was the return of a sense of completeness, confidence in the future, and the joy of knowing that the family was back together. Her heart was overflowing with great happiness at being able to see him again, to hug him and share with him all that had happened during his absence. His father began asking about the current state of affairs at the estate, paying attention to every detail, eager to assess how the estate had been run in his absence. This moment triggered a flash of memories for Ayana. She suddenly realized that this day had been marked by a preordained set of events, the significance of which, to her regret, she could not fully recall. Involuntarily seized by the feeling that something important was going to happen today, she sank into thought, trying to recover lost bits of memory. It was at this point, as the conversation flowed and Ayana was still fighting the fog in her memories, that Diabel appeared beside her father. His appearance added solemnity to the situation. Diabel, with a clarity and confidence that left no room for doubt, declared his intention to become a knight of House Rehoff. Diabel, whose gaze always held a spark of inscrutable secrets, turned his attention to the Rehoff family, and a smile full of hidden hints lit up his lips. This gesture, seemingly innocent and commonplace, caused a wave of indignation in Ayana's heart. To her, whose senses were always on the line, Diabel's gaze was a harbinger of the coming storm. His presence marked the beginning of the countdown, after which, in a month's time, the ancient and powerful Rehoff clan would fall under the onslaught of the hostile Roselle clan. That night, coming after a day full of anxiety and heavy forebodings, was a time of reflection and remembrance for Ayana. In the silence of her room, shrouded in darkness, she let her thoughts drift. After thirteen years full of trials and hardships, this day was special to her. For the first time in years, she had the opportunity to enjoy dinner with her family, to feel the warmth of loved ones and exchange smiles with them, forgetting the dark omens hanging over their home. This moment seemed to stop time, allowing Ayana to forget the impending dangers and immerse herself in a world where love and understanding reigned supreme. But even in these moments when the soul longed for peace, the shadow of future separation flickered on the horizon, reminding her of herself and making every smile more meaningful, every word more important. There came a period in Ayana's life that was shrouded in the shadow of tragedy and trials, when fate seemed to play mercilessly with her, taking away what was most precious, her family. It was a time when every next step felt like a betrayal of the memory of those she had lost. After the death of her family, Ayana, like a leaf blown away by a harsh autumn wind, found herself facing a new imposed fate, marriage to the Marquis of Facito. This union, devoid of warmth and understanding, was another challenge for her. The Marquis, a man with a soul darkened by cruelty and indifference, revealed his nature when he beat a maid to death without the slightest remorse, an act that opened Ayana's eyes to his true colors. In this marriage, Ayana was merely a means to the ends of the Facito family, the birth of an heir who would inherit her title and bring new glory and power to their house. With each day spent within the walls of the Marquise's gloomy castle, she became more and more aware of her loneliness and alienation from those who should rightfully be her new family. But Ayana's heart refused to accept this union as true kinship, for how can you call family those who see you only as a tool for their own selfish ends? 
Faced with such a bleak future, Ayana was faced with an alternative that was equally bleak, falling into the hands of Roselle's family. In a dark chapter of Ayana's life, marred by tragedy and hardship, the birth of a son was a ray of light, a glimmer of hope for a better future. As he grew older, however, that ray began to dim, overshadowed by the shadow of the growing cruelty in the boy's soul. It was an ordeal for Ayana's motherly heart, who tried with all her might to find love for him, believing that this feeling could heal both her and him. But despite her best efforts, her heart remained rebellious, and her soul was racked with the pain of realizing that the bond between mother and son had not brought the redemption she had so hoped for. In this labyrinth of loneliness and despair, the only light for Ayana was Diabelle, her constant companion and protector, whose presence at her side gave her confidence and hope. He was the one who tirelessly offered her a path to freedom, dreaming of leading her away from the darkness of the past and giving her a fresh start. Diabelle saw the depth of her suffering and was willing to do anything to protect her from the pain and despair that filled her life. His offer to escape sounded like a melody of freedom, promising healing from the wounds of the past and the opportunity to build a new life where suffering would have no place. Diabelle, with his unwavering support and genuine care, became a pillar of support for Ayana, through which she was able to keep her faith in a better future. His willingness to be her protector and guide to a new life was a vital gift of fate to her, allowing her to dream of days filled with light in contrast to the darkness that seemed already eternal. Suddenly, Ayana's emotions were running high as thoughts of Diabelle returned to her obsessively, like unrelenting shadows that even the brightest corner of her mind could not escape. It was more than just annoyance. It was deep anger, sparking in her chest like an unquenchable fire ready to burn everything in its path. Time flowed differently for Ayana. She felt its pressure like an invisible weight weighing on her shoulders. Her heart grew heavier with each day that drew closer to the inevitable future. There was something grand yet frightening ahead, an epidemic that was soon to descend upon the world, catalyzing unprecedented changes in the lives of Ayana and the entire Facito family. In the original timeline that Ayana knew better than anyone else, it was this epidemic that took a tragic turn, cutting off the lives of the Facito family and leaving her as the head of the family. It was a moment when fate seemed to have crossed all possible boundaries, leaving Ayana alone with her mission and her thirst for revenge. Roselle's family, longtime and sworn enemies, stood at the center of her plans for revenge. That thought filled her every breath with determination and every exhalation with unwavering purpose. Ayana realized that the path she had chosen would be thorny and dangerous, but she was willing to walk it to the end. In this struggle for justice and retribution, she was both a general and a soldier, a warrior ready to do battle not only with an external enemy, but also with her own demons lurking in the shadows of her past. Every thought of the future, every plan of revenge, all were woven into the fabric of her days like dark threads of fate that prefigured her path. But Ayana wasn't looking for pity or sympathy. She was looking for justice and a chance to change the course of history to prevent the mistakes of the past from being repeated. There was hope in her heart that even in the darkest of nights, a spark of light could be found to light the way to a new day, a day when vengeance would give way to peace and the pain of the past to hope for a better future. Ayana Rehoff, who possesses not only strength and the ability to make decisions at critical moments, but also the deep insight that has become her companion in the struggle for the future of her clan, has decided to take the initiative this time. She realized that her family's fate hung in the balance, and she was determined to prevent the Roselle attack, which she knew was going to break out in a month. Her plan was not only to protect her loved ones from the imminent threat, but also to strengthen the position of her clan so that such attacks would be impossible in the future. At that moment, while Ayana's thoughts were completely consumed with strategy and future plans, Diabelle entered the room, a mysterious figure with whom she had unresolved business related to the contract that brought her back in time. This contract was a key element in her journey, and now that its creator stood before her, Ayana felt it was time to seek answers. With an iron determination in her voice that left no room for doubt as to the seriousness of her intentions, 
she sternly asked Diabel who he was. This question was not idle curiosity or an attempt at dialogue. It was a demand for understanding, a key to unlocking the secrets that Diabel held within himself. His answer was shrouded in a veil of mystery, for instead of a direct answer, he smiled, a smile full of mystery and unread pages of their shared history. There was an unspoken heaviness in the air as Diabel stood before Ayana and revealed his true nature to her. He introduced himself, not just as a knight from the noble Rehoff family, but as an unwavering defender of Ayana, deeply immersed in learning about her personal tragedy. Moreover, he openly declared himself to be the very devil Diabel, an entity shrouded in darkness and mystery whose name causes awe and terror in the hearts of many. Ayana, confronted with this revelation, felt an inner turmoil. Diabel, her steadfast guardian, who for thirteen long years had stood between her and all the dangers of the world, now appeared to her as a devil. In her view, the devil has always been the embodiment of evil, a tempter who seeks to corrupt souls and sow discord among men. Such exposure caused her to struggle between her long-held beliefs and the undeniable loyalty that Diabel had shown over the years. At that moment, Ayana was faced with a difficult dilemma. Accept the incredible truth that Diabel had revealed and try to reconcile herself with the idea that her protector was none other than a creature that symbolized evil itself. Doubt and sadness struggled within her, for now she had to rethink not only her attitude toward Diabel, but also the whole previous experience of their adventures and trials together. Despite this, she realized that there are things in life that are above personal experiences and emotional turmoil. Ayana had to make a difficult decision that would determine her future fate and her relationship with Diabel, such a multifaceted and contradictory figure in her life. Ayana's heart was gripped with anxiety and excitement as she stood before Diabel, trying to solve the riddle that plagued her mind. The main question that kept her wondering was why Diabel had chosen this very moment, after a full thirteen years of adventures and trials together, to reveal his true nature to her. In response to her question, Diabel, with a slight smile that could mean both genuine amusement and cryptic ambiguity, noted that Ayana had never before sought to ask the question directly. His words sounded simple, but they hid the depth of years of secrets and untold stories. Next, Ayana, whose soul was clouded with forebodings and doubts, ventured a more delicate question, inquiring as to the reasons that prompted Diabel to reveal herself just at the moment when she was teetering on the brink of life and death. Diabel's answer was as unexpected as the revelation of his true identity. He admitted that it was the opportunity to have fun watching her struggles and trials that made him keep his secret in the shadows throughout the years. There was something disturbingly playful in those words, as if Diabel derived pleasure from watching human suffering, especially those he cared about. In a somber yet heartfelt conversation, Diabel revealed to Ayana one of the most mesmerizing secrets of her world. He began by saying that devils, creatures whose lives are measured not in years or decades but in centuries, have a special passion for the tragic plots of human history. These boundless, dark entities, bored with mundane stories that are invariably repeated from generation to generation, have invented something unique, a theater of human destinies. It's a phenomenon where devs witness the most fascinating, unique, and at times tragic stories of people's lives while literally being one breath away from the protagonists of these dramas. Diabel, with bitterness in his voice, admitted to Ayana that he was genuinely upset by the girl's failure to seek revenge on Roselle's family. After all, revenge would be another page in the book of human passions that the devils were so fond of. He hoped that Ayana would do well this time, showing not only his attention to the details of her life's journey, but also some semblance of sympathy, or at least interest in the outcome of her future trials. For thirteen years, Diabel had been Ayana's indispensable companion, a shadow following her footsteps, the silent guardian of her destinies. In the back of her mind, Ayana cherished the thought that his constant presence with her was a sign of sincere affection, perhaps even love. It was a beacon of light in the darkness, a comfort in moments of despair. But when she gathered courage and expressed her feelings, hoping that their common path was the path of the heart, Diabel, with unfailing calm confidence, 
confirmed her conjectures and admitted that he did indeed love her. This sincerity, however, caused Ayana not relief, but a wave of pain and anger. Her words broke through the wall of years of silence, accusing him of the kind of suffering true love would never have allowed her to go through. She cried out that if he really loved her, he would have found a way to put her out of her misery, instead of letting it drag on for years. Her words were full of frustration and pain, for in her mind, love always went hand in hand with protection and patronage. Diabelle's answer was unexpected. With a smile in which the bitterness of understanding and fate were evident, he replied that this was the nature of devils. His words sounded like a verdict, like an explanation that even in the midst of the darkness and chaos that were part and parcel of his being, love could be born. But this love was not the kind of love portrayed in stories and songs. It was complex, contradictory, and full of thorns, like the nature of the one who experienced it. Diabel made a point that echoed in the hearts of those who walked beside him. He emphasized that any story devoid of trials and difficulties is doomed to seem uninteresting and monotonous. Those words were like a key unlocking the lock of Ayana's memories, and she couldn't hold back the tears that rolled down her cheeks. They were not merely a symbol of sadness or weakness, but instead a reflection of a deep realization of the long and thorny road that had been traveled. Diabel, with his power over fate, could have chosen to leave Ayana on a path that would lead her to an inevitable and tragic end. He could have left her on the scaffold, a symbol of despair and the collapse of hope, where her journey would have ended in the most horrific way. However, his words were not only threatening but also wise, encouraging us to think that even in the darkest corners of fate, there are hidden chances for redemption and opportunities for change. Determined to reject the thought of such a bleak ending to their shared history, Diabel gave Ayana an opportunity for correction and a new beginning. This choice was not made lightly. It reflected a deep belief that everyone deserves a chance at salvation and an opportunity to prove their resilience in the face of adversity. Ayana, reflecting on the past events and Diabel's words, came to a startling realization. It was clear to her that Diabel's companionship on their long and arduous journey had been motivated not so much by a desire to help or support them as by pure curiosity. Seeing the quiet recognition in his eyes confirmed by a nod, Ayana felt a surge of the most contradictory feelings. Emotions overwhelmed her, and unable to contain the tension, she slapped Diabel. That gesture, more than words, expressed the full range of feelings that had been building up in her heart. In response to her outburst of anger, Diabel only smiled and, as if playing with fire, provoked her. Did she not wish to strike him again? This challenge, which sounded like a spark between them, ignited Ayana into hysterics. Tears mingled with her screams, and she began randomly striking Diabel's face and chest, the man she had once loved unconditionally. In this chaos of feelings, when Ayana's every stroke became a reflection of her inner struggles and dashed hopes, Diabel suddenly showed concern. He stopped her hand, expressing concern that she might hurt herself. His offer to take something heavier for a beating, contrary to expectations, didn't sound like mockery. Rather, it was an admission that he was willing to take on her anger, recognizing the depth of her frustration and pain. In that tense atmosphere, where every word and action carried weight, Ayana, barely containing the swirl of emotions within her, dared to ask the question that had been burning in her soul for a long time. She asked Diabel if he felt pleasure in watching her cry, in watching her struggle against circumstances that seemed insurmountable. Her gaze was piercing, as if she was seeking not just answers, but the truth about the man standing before her. Before Diabel could respond, Ayana, unable to find the patience to listen to him, tried to strike again. Her actions were as swift and decisive as a meteor cleaving the night sky, but Diabel met her attack with an unexpected acknowledgement. It was clear from his words. He didn't help her, not because he didn't want to, but because he believed in her strength, in her ability to overcome adversity on her own. This confession was like a cold shower for Ayana, for it turned her perception of his motives upside down. In the very next breath, however, Diabel confessed that watching her suffer gave him a kind of perverse pleasure. The words sounded like a judgment, confirming her worst fears about his character. 
Tension hovered in the atmosphere as Ayana and Diabel's gazes intertwined in a quiet but thick silence. It was hard to predict the outcome of this meeting, for each of them was full of determination and secret intentions. Ayana, her eyes sparkling with defiance like waves in a stormy sea, spoke her desire to end Diabel's life in a menacing voice. Her words were filled with such force and determination that she seemed ready to put her words into action on the spot. Diabel, on the other hand, remained unwaveringly calm, a smile playing across his face, as if he was in a familiar element despite Ayana's menacing threats. With a smile, he assured her that he would be there for her, ready to come to her aid at any moment, despite everything that had happened between them. Those words were full of not only a promise of support, but a hint of deep understanding and perhaps an unexpected connection between them. Ayana, however, did not accept this promise gratefully. In response to his words and gestures, she pushed his hand away, rejecting any attempt at rapprochement or help. Her order to hide from her sight was clear and unyielding, as if she were putting an insurmountable boundary between herself and Diabelle. This moment emphasized the deep divide between them, a conflict that seemed unresolvable. Their interactions were filled with deep emotions and unresolved questions that left the viewer in suspense and waiting for events to unfold. Stepping away, Diabelle left behind words that sounded almost like echoes in the silence, a promise to always be there for him, even despite Ayana's apparent reluctance to allow his presence in her life. Those words hovered in the air, leaving a sense of inevitability that they would come true, regardless of her wishes. Ayana, left alone, finds a moment of solitude that seems endless. Her mind is enveloped in silence, in which she tries to grasp the essence of what is happening around her. Exhausted by the events, she collapses on her bed feeling absolutely devastated. This moment of despair portrays her as an exhausted being, devoid of strength and desire to move on. Ayana is in a state of deep fatigue where even the thought seems an unbearable burden. In this heavy silence, she can barely feel her own body. Her existence seems devoid of meaning, as if she has become a lifeless shell. However, even in such a moment of despair, a glimmer of realization pierces her mind. Ayana comes to realize that time is inexorably passing and that she has a task of gigantic proportions before her. She realizes that she has less than a month to prepare for the upcoming attack by Roselle's family. She realizes that she has less than a month to prepare for the upcoming attack on Roselle's family. Despite her internal resistance and physical exhaustion, she realizes that she needs to mobilize all her strength and resources in the face of an impending threat. This moment becomes the breaking point when Ayana, despite all obstacles, prepares to meet her fate face to face, gathering her thoughts and setting herself up for the struggle ahead. Experiencing a deep fear of a repeat of the horrific events of the past overwhelms Ayana, leaving her heart with an overwhelming anxiety. The memory of the loss of her loved ones, of the terrible day when death took her family, gave her no peace. Going back in time gave her a chance to right the wrongs and perhaps prevent tragedy. But the prospect of losing them again, the realization that their deaths could become a reality again, filled her soul with unspeakable pain and despair. She knew that she could not bear it a second time, that her heart could not bear such a second blow. But Ayana was faced with a dilemma that seemed insoluble. On the one hand, wanting to share her knowledge of the future with her father might have helped prevent the impending disaster, but on the other hand, she was tormented by doubts and fears about his reaction. In her imagination, images of her telling him the truth and him looking at her with eyes full of incomprehension and doubt, as if she were not his daughter, but a stranger mumbling incoherent fantasies. Ayana was acutely aware that her story, intertwined with time travel and forebodings of the future, might seem absurd and unbelievable. She feared that her words would be met with skepticism and disbelief, that her attempts to warn against the coming danger would be dismissed as fiction. Ayana discovered the power to withstand adversity. Realizing that tears could not change reality, she decided to arm herself with the knowledge of the original timeline in an effort to prepare herself for any trials that might befall her. The decision was like lighting a beacon in a dark night, guiding her along a path of not only survival but possible triumph over her circumstances. However, 
just when it seemed that every step forward had been thought out, Ayana was confronted with something as unexpected as it was mysterious. She noticed a strange pattern on her chest that seemed to come out of nowhere. The symbol, previously unknown to her, instantly awakened a wave of questions. Where did it come from and what did it mean? Was it a harbinger of new trials or perhaps a gift given by fate for the battles to come? After a few days, as Ayana immersed herself in the ritual of bathing procedures designed not only to purify the body, but also to renew the spirit, her world was once again darkened by the unexpected. The maid who was busy brushing her hair suddenly expressed her admiration for Diabel, calling him handsome. The mention of that name sent a cold wind through Ayana, causing her to tense up. Diabel, whose name carried so much uncertainty and potential threat, was back in her mind again, making her think of the many things that could be hidden behind his image. These moments imprinted in Ina's memory were not mere vicissitudes of fate, but signs indicating the depth and complexity of the world in which she was to find her way. Ayana, ever since Diabel's outline had disappeared in the darkness of that unforgettable night, had not had the opportunity to meet him again. Yet his presence, like a ghost, continued to haunt her thoughts, leaving an unpleasant residue of irritation. The situation reached its climax when one of the maids, with a twinkle in her eye, shared with Ayana her impressions of Diabel, claiming that his personality had won the hearts of all the inhabitants of the estate. Ayana, whose displeasure had reached a fever pitch, reacted strongly to these words, cautioning the maid against trusting people so unquestioningly. This caused the maid to freeze in slight exasperation at the suddenness and sharpness of the remark. After this brief but meaningful exchange, Ayana felt that all preparations were finally complete, and it was time for privacy. With a sense of achieved calmness, she announced to the maids that she wished to bathe in absolute isolation from everyone, emphasizing her desire to enjoy the rare moments of solitude without anyone else's presence. After Ayana had secured complete privacy, she decided it was time to pay attention to the newly discovered tattoo that had mysteriously appeared on her skin. This unexpected twist of fate made her realize that the upcoming conversation with Diabel promised to be not only necessary, but probably extremely stressful. Ayana was certain that he was the one behind this mystery, and he was the only one she could get answers from. When the opportunity finally presented itself, Ayana blandly approached Diabel with a question about the origin of the mark. But all she saw in response was a mocking smile on his lips, as if he were playing a devious game with her, pretending to know absolutely nothing about the tattoo. This reaction only added fuel to the fire of her irritation, prompting her to angrily suggest that he look at the proof of his words to dispel all doubts. However, Diabel, with unwavering calmness and coldness in his voice, rejected her offer, stating that he had absolutely no interest in her body. His indifference was like a sword cutting through Ayana's last hope for answers. The moment was a test for Ayana, as she faced unexpected rejection from the man she thought was the key to solving her question. After a tense exchange of remarks, Diabel finally revealed the mystery surrounding the mysterious tattoo on Ayana's body. He explained that there is an ancient practice among devils that they leave a special mark on the skin of those who contract with them. It is a sign not just of recognition, but of an indelible bond, symbolizing a deep and abiding agreement between the two parties. Diabel recognized that not even his power could erase or move the mark. The only ways to get rid of it were extremely painful procedures, such as using a special blade or cauterization, which was certainly unacceptable for a lady of aristocratic descent like Ayana. This revelation was a real blow to Ayana. The mark on her body now seemed to her not only physical proof of an invisible contract with the devil, but also a symbol of social exile. In a world where reputation and blood purity are crucial, especially for women of the aristocratic circle, having such a mark could have spelled disaster for her future chances of marriage. Ayana realized that this mark could become not only a personal burden, but a stain on her reputation that could cause the doors of noble houses to close in front of her forever. Ayana, despite the deep disappointment and unforgiven resentment caused by Diabel's actions, has come to believe that his extraordinary demonic abilities may be the key to protecting her family from impending threats. She realized that although the trust between them had been shattered, 
their shared interests and need for protection could be the basis for a new, albeit cautious, alliance. Diabel, on his part, expressed full confidence in his ability to fulfill any of Ayana's requests, provided she was willing to pay the appropriate price for his services. His words sounded like a promise of limitless possibilities, but also a reminder that in a world dominated by the forces of darkness and light, everything has a cost, and any wish can be granted for the right price. Realizing that the stakes are high and eager to keep her family safe at all costs, Ayana decides to take a bold step. She asks Diabel the direct and decisive question of whether he is capable of building an army, a force capable of protecting her family and their holdings from any enemies. In a world where magic and the forces of darkness intertwine in a dance of power and ambition, Diabel, a creature of darkness, claimed it was in his power to grant any wish. Ayana, with fire in her eyes and dreams of greatness, approached him with a request that could change the course of history. Her heart burned with a thirst for vengeance, and she asked Diabel for an army so great and powerful that it could wipe the Roselles off the face of the earth in one fell swoop, fulfilling her wildest aspirations. However, contrary to her expectations, Diabel cooled her fervor with a cold statement. He said that despite his power, he could not give Ayana what she wanted without mutual payment. At the time of the pact between them, Ayana promised to give Diabel everything she had in exchange for his help. But now that it was time to fulfill her wish, it appeared that Ayana had nothing left to pay for the services of the powerful devil. This discovery forced her to look at the situation from a different angle. Frustrated and full of anger, Ayana vented her frustration on Diabel, calling him useless. Her words were full of disappointment, for her plans for power and revenge had collapsed overnight. After Ayana realized that her wishes would not come true and she had nowhere to wait for Diabel's help, her frustration was at its peak. In a fit of anger and desperation, she ordered Diabel out of her presence, threatening to reveal his true identity to her father. Ayana was determined, her words cutting the air like a sword ready to strike. But Diabel, never losing his enigmatic smile, only grinned in response to her threats. With an ease typical of a creature of his kind, he reminded Ayana that their contract placed restrictions on her words. Any attempts by her to accuse him of diabolical deeds would be futile, as they would go unheeded. Ayana felt trapped in her own despair, coming face to face with a reality where her words lacked weight and her actions lacked significance. She was furious at the realization of her powerlessness in the face of the agreement she herself had made. Her anger was directed at Diabel, who in her eyes appeared no better than a useless devil, unable to help her in her endeavors. Diabel, however, despite her accusations, found a way to present the situation in a different light. He emphasized that his uselessness as a devil did not mean his uselessness as a human being. By remaining her bodyguard, he indicated that his role and importance in her life was not yet exhausted. This turn made Ayana look at Diabel from a new angle, realizing that in a world where trust and loyalty were becoming rare, perhaps she hadn't lost everything yet. Ayana, young and determined, tried again to send Diabel away, eager to gain independence and prove her ability to rule without his interference. But Diabel, steadfast and unrelenting, reminded her of the prevailing reality with icy certainty. He emphasized that in the current situation where a disciplined army was absent and the loyalty of the soldiers to the young ruler was highly questionable, his presence by her side as a bodyguard became not just desirable, but imperative. This statement caused a storm of emotion in Ayana's heart. She was both annoyed and puzzled at the same time because she could not deny the truth in Diabel's words. In the back of her mind, she realized that her young age and lack of support among the military made her position vulnerable. Her thoughts drifted to how things might have turned out differently if she had not been a princess, but a firstborn, a first son on whom all hopes and expectations were placed. At that moment, as if reading her thoughts, Diabel interrupted the silence with a voice filled with confidence— he reminded Ayana that, despite her difficulties, she had something that set her apart from the rest, a unique knowledge of the future and a deep, inexhaustible anger at Roselle's family. 
These words made Ayana look at her situation from a different angle, realizing that her inner strength and desire for change could be the key to gaining control of her destiny and the future of her people. So, in the heart of the ancient castle, where every stone keeps the echo of past battles and intrigues, the drama of the struggle for power, respect, and the right to choose one's own path unfolds. In an atmosphere where every word and every decision can change the course of history, Diabel expressed his admiration for Ayana beyond all expectations. He made it clear that his decision to sign the contract was not due to a simple belief in her capabilities, but to a conviction in her exceptional ability to overcome any obstacle. Diabel, whose opinions and decisions were never taken lightly, claimed that Ayana had potential that surpassed even the accomplishments of her father and brothers, thus placing her on a pedestal of unrivaled value and power. Ayana, usually so confident in herself and her decisions, was deeply moved by this confession. For the first time, someone saw her not just another figure in the power game, but a real traitor to reality, capable of rewriting the history of her world. This recognition made her take a fresh look at her strengths and capabilities, providing her with a new source of inspiration. The moment Diabel expressed his desire to become her bodyguard to witness the great things Ayana would accomplish, the story of their relationship took a new turn. His request was not a simple offer of services. It was a desire to be a part of something grand, to watch the events unfold from the front lines and be the one to support Ayana on her path to greatness. Before Ayana could respond, however, the space outside the door suddenly came alive with a voice. It was the voice of Cecilia, Ayana's sister, whose sudden appearance added intrigue and tension to the already charged atmosphere. Her presence outside the door was like a reminder that in their world, every move and every word could have unforeseen consequences, and that the story they were all weaving together was full of unexpected twists and turns and hidden chapters. In the depths of the cozy but tension-filled room, Ayana invites Cecilia to cross the threshold of her room with a nervous smile. The heaviness of the previous dialogue still lingers in the air, and the hostess of the room can't help but worry that her guest will immediately pick up on this invisible trace of the conversation that recently ended here. Ayana, with a touch of hope in her voice, asks Diabel to leave them alone in an effort to create a calmer and friendlier atmosphere for her guest. Diabel seemed to accept the offer without a shadow of regret and easily agreed to leave, his figure slowly dissolving into the passage, leaving behind only a slight movement of air. Cecilia, stepping into the room, immediately senses the change in atmosphere. Her gaze slides across the space, trying to catch the invisible threads of the past conversation, and she can't hide her surprise to find that Ayana was talking to the new knight of their family, a character shrouded in mystery and rumors. This discovery sets off a whirlwind of thoughts and speculations about the possible reasons and topics of their conversation. All this creates a special atmosphere of a meeting between two women, each perhaps seeking answers to their own questions or seeking to hide their own secrets. Ayana, feeling Cecilia's gaze on her, hesitantly tried to justify herself by talking about the insignificant, everyday things that she said required discussion with Diabel. Her voice trembled, as if reflecting the excitement she felt inside as she tried to give her words credibility. However, Cecilia, whose attention was riveted on her every movement and sound, gently but insistently cautioned Ayana to be more careful. Her voice sounded not only concerned, but also a hidden anxiety, for Ayana was betrothed, and such meetings could give rise to unwanted rumors and suspicions. As Ayana recalls her engagement, it's as if she's plunged into a maelstrom of the past, where she had a fiancé in her life with whom she shared happy moments before the tragedy that took her family away. This memory turns out to be an unexpected cold shower, reminding her that going back in time has once again given her a chance at happiness that seemed irretrievably lost. The thought makes her heart race and her eyes glow with the deep feelings she had for her fiancé. At that moment, Ayana realizes the full extent of the situation where her every action and word can have unpredictable consequences. In the silence of the room, where every sound seemed especially loud, 
Cecilia's words about tomorrow's reception sounded like something unexpected, making Ayana lost in speculation for a moment. Cecilia, catching the look of bewilderment in Ayana's eyes, hastened to recall the excitement that had gripped her upon receiving the invitation from Fleta Roselle. Her words opened the curtain over the memories of a sleepless night full of anticipation and joy at the upcoming event. It was a time when Ayana's heart beat in unison with dreams of a meeting that promised to be one of the brightest events of her life. But the mention of Fleta Roselle's name like a cold wind dispelled all these dreams, leaving behind only anxiety and insight. Fleta Roselle, a girl whose beauty was as striking as her cruelty was secretive, had once awakened Ayana's admiration. But now, hearing her name, Ayana sank into deep thought. Connecting the dots of past and present led her to the realization that the invitation she had received a month before the fateful Roselle attack on their family might not have been an accident, but a well-planned move in a long game whose goal was nothing less than their destruction. This realization enveloped Ayana with a chill, making her reevaluate everything she knew about Fleta Roselle and look at the upcoming reception from a completely different angle. Now every step, every word at this reception had to be weighed and considered, because in a game where the stakes are so high, any little thing could be decisive. In that moment, Ayana felt the weight of the upcoming meeting weigh on her shoulders, in which she had to not only defend her family's honor, but also try to unravel Fleta Roselle's intentions behind the outward attractiveness and charm of the invitation. Cecilia's concern for Ayana's well-being was so genuine that offering to rest before such a significant event seemed like the only right thing to do. But Ayana's determination, illuminated by the flickering light of confidence in her eyes, was unwavering. Her smile, though it seemed strained, was determined. She was not only going to attend the reception, but she had a burning desire to meet Roselle's family, as if that meeting would be the key to unlocking many mysteries. At dawn the next day, when the sun's rays had barely begun to break through the thick curtains, Ayana was already determined. Her choice of escort to the reception had caused Diabelle no small amount of surprise. His habit of being a fearless protector was put on pause when he learned that Ayana wished to have him as her bodyguard at such a significant event. For Ayana, however, this decision was far from spontaneous. She carefully weighed the pros and cons before coming to the conclusion that going to an appointment at Diabelle's company would not only be a safe, but also a strategically sound choice. Diabelle, Understanding the gravity of the situation and the dangers that could await Ayana in the hall where all the representatives of high society, including the Roselle family, would gather, accepted the challenge with honor. His willingness to protect Ayana from any threats was unconditional, and in that decision he read not only a professional obligation, but also a personal interest in her well-being. Ayana, with a piercing stare, turned to Diabelle with a question that would have stumped many— what would he do if the order came from her to cut off Roselle Sr.'s head? Diabelle's response was unexpected and direct. He would not hesitate to follow orders, thus causing Ayana's shock. Her surprise was so great that she hastily assured him that she would never have ordered such a reckless act. The conversation continued, and Diabelle, watching Ayana's reaction with amazement, decided to clarify what steps she was going to take in the situation. In response, Ayana expressed her determination to find such evidence as could convince her father to begin preparations for the defense of their family estate. This moment revealed the depth of Ayana's strategic thinking and her willingness to take risks to protect her home and family, even if it required her to find irrefutable evidence that could change her father's mind about the importance of the action ahead. Ayana has spent 13 years trying to solve the mystery of why the Roselli attacked her family. All those years of war and fighting brought her no answers, except for rumors that her father had allegedly made an attempt on the king's life. However, deep in her heart, she could never believe these accusations. Her father, she remembered, had been a man of honor and loyalty, the epitome of loyalty to his king and kingdom. Diabel provided her with a different perspective telling her about the current king who ascended to the throne as a result of the mysterious deaths of all of his relatives who claimed power. This wave of unexplained disappearances aroused a great deal of suspicion among the people, 
and many were inclined to think that the king himself might have been behind these grim events, seeking to secure his power in any way possible. Ayana, raised in a spirit of loyalty and respect for royalty, could not bear the thought that her father might have betrayed his king. She persisted in her search for the truth, believing in her father's innocence and his unwavering loyalty to the kingdom. These events and Ayana's reflections revealed the depth of drama and internal conflicts in history, shrouding her life in a veil of secrets and mysteries that she sought to unravel in order to restore her family's honor and discover the true causes of the tragedy that had befallen her loved ones. As Ayana thought deeply and analyzed the events that had happened to her family, she came to the conclusion that Ansgar Roselle may have used the accusations against her father as a convenient excuse to achieve his own ends. She suggested that the real reason for the conflict lay not in the alleged assassination attempt on the king, but in the struggle for power and influence in the kingdom. Ayana is convinced that both families, her own and Roselle's, were loyal servants of the previous monarch, and their relationship changed dramatically after his death. The change of power led to a redistribution of power and influence in the kingdom, as a result of which the positions of both families were threatened. In this context, Ayana sees Ansgar Rosel's actions as a strategic move aimed at eliminating rivals and strengthening his own power. She believes that Ansgar may have taken advantage of the rumors and misunderstandings circulating around her father to justify his aggressive actions and present them to the public as measures to protect the king and the kingdom.